Hey guys, Christy here from the Stamp Cycle and welcome to another video for my YouTube channel and blog. So it's been a few weeks since I posted a video and that is because I've been out of the country in Peru. Pretty exciting. Uh, my husband planned this surprise birthday trip for me this year and so we left a few weeks ago. And right before I left, I bought this Tim Holtz Crazy Dog stamp set. When I saw the stamp set, I had to have it. I love the dog images in this stamp set. They're so cute and fun. So I bought this for myself. Happy birthday to me. And <laughs> now I'm just getting around to using it for the first time. So the card that I'm going to be creating for you today is I will be doing some watercoloring. So I have here three of the images from that stamp set. I have the tennis ball, the bone, and the dog bowl. I'm going to be stamping those all over this piece of watercolor paper in like a random pattern. So I've put all of those images onto one clear block so that I can stamp them all in a grouping and get the stamping done a lot faster than if I just stamped each image individually. So I'm stamping all of these in Versamark ink. And I'm working on the textured side of this watercolor piece. And I did treat this very heavily with my embossing buddy to prevent any static. So once I get all of my images stamped with that Versamark ink, I'm going to apply some WOW. This is their um, ultra fine white opaque embossing powder. Um, I really like this clean, crisp embossing powder from WOW. So once I get everything stamped and the embossing powder applied, I will then heat set all of these images with my heat tool. Now I'm also going to be stamping on another piece of watercolor paper, one of those dog images from the stamp set. Um, don't really know what, what dog that is, maybe a chihuahua, um, I'm not sure, but it is super cute. The tongue's hanging out, the ears are all wobbly, uh, its eyes are crazy. I just thought this dog was, was super cute and I uh, wanted to use it for my card. So again, I'm just going to stamp this dog onto the textured side of a piece of watercolor paper. I will apply that same white embossing powder that I did on the other images and I will just heat set that with my heat tool and then we will be set to begin watercoloring. If you're new to watercolor, this is really a great way to kind of learn how to watercolor without getting the messy results. And what I mean by that is when you heat emboss your images in watercolor, the raised edges of the embossed images kind of hold that color in so that it doesn't spread all over your piece of watercolor paper. So it makes it, it's really good for beginners and I enjoy it because I can I can throw down color and not have to worry about uh, colors bleeding together or it just becoming one big mess. So what I'm doing here is I have squeezed lemonade and cracked pistachio, I cannot say that word, <laughs> um, distress inks, and I'm just coloring in all of these tennis balls. I did apply some clean, clear water to each of those tennis balls before applying the distress ink. Now I'm going to move on to the dog bowls. I wanted to paint these blue. I first pulled out Stormy Sky, and you see I painted that, that one dog bowl. I didn't, it wasn't bright enough for me. I wanted these dog bowls to be really bright, that blue to really pop off of this page. So I went and changed over to, I do believe this is Blueprint Sketch. Um, this is a more vibrant, kind of a brilliant blue, if you will, where the Stormy Sky was more of a gray blue. So I'm just again using that paintbrush. I am washing the paintbrush off really well in between colors here. And I'm just dipping the paintbrush in water and then picking up the Distress Ink and applying it directly onto those embossed images there of the dog bowl. This is a super easy way to get some really nice watercolor look. So after I got all of the dog bowls uh, colored. I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> um, I moved on to the bones. Now, you know, bones are white, but they really aren't, nothing in nature is really a true white. So I wanted those bones to kind of stand out. So I pulled out um, my pumice stone distress ink. I used a lot of water to really get this distress ink really watered down so that the color wasn't as intense. And that's what I colored the bones with. And then I just went back in with more of that blueprint sketch and added a second layer to those dog bowls. 
the color just wasn't as intense as I wanted it to be. So that's the thing about watercolor is it will dry lighter. So when you're watercoloring, just start light because you can always build the color up. But if you start too dark, it's very hard to take the color back down. So always start with the light hand and then you can always add layer upon layer to get the depth or the brightness of the color that you want. So now that I've got all the images colored, I wanted to color this entire background. I wanted it to be light enough that it didn't distract from the images, but enough color that it made those pop off um, this background. So I did take that stormy sky that I had originally pulled out for the dog bones, and I just got some water on my paintbrush, dipped it in to the Stormy Sky ink, and just started slapping it on here in the background. I'm not trying to be nice and neat. I wanted this to have sharp edges from the water, varying color depths across this whole background. Um, I wanted this to be a fun, kind of playful background, so I'm not worrying too much about um, getting that background to look the same um, across the across the whole piece of watercolor paper. So now that we've got our, um, our what I'm going to call our pattern paper done, we'll move on to watercoloring the dog. So for the dog, I'm going to be using that same brown ink that you saw me use for the dog food in the dog bowl. This is Scattered Twigs. I'm pretty sure that's the name of it, Scattered Twigs. But again, like I mentioned, you want to start lighter so that you can build on your color. So I've got a lot of water in my paintbrush here and I'm just picking up a little bit of that um, scatter twig brown ink and just applying that all over to the dog body, um, the dog face and the ears and I know that I'm going to go back in and add some darker shadows with that same color ink. So that's why you want to start out light and then you can build your color from there. Um, Shadows are not something that I'm very good at doing, so I really make sure to, to not go too heavy-handed. So once I have, you know, the first initial wash of the dog body down, I'm going to continue painting the other pieces of the dog. For the snout, I used antique linen, um, so it's just a, a lighter like really tan shade. And then for the ears and the nose, I used... I cannot remember the name. I think maybe this was Romance Rose. That doesn't sound right. But it was a very, very light pink. Again, I watered it down quite a bit so that the color wouldn't be um, very intense. And then I used some of that same Blueprint Sketch ink to lightly color in the eyes. And then I am going to go heavier on the collar of the dog because I wanted that to be the same color as the dog bowl. So all these colors will kind of like pull, like, um, all go together when the card is, is finished. For the nose and the little dots in the eyes, I pulled in some um, black smut. And then for the little medallion, the little name tag um, on the dog's collar there, I just used some of that squeeze lemonade. Now here I'll go back in and add those shadows, um, like I mentioned. I just took the same color Distress ink. I used less water so that the ink was more intense and more saturated in color and just dropped in some shadows. I am not an expert at shadows. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just kind of put down where I think shadows would be, and then I just took some clean, clear water and just blended those those sharp edges out um, so that you really couldn't see the sharp, um, the sharp edges there. Now, going back to this initial piece that we watercolored, I made sure it was nice and dry, and then I spritzed it with my Distress Sprayer. This is going to, those dots of water will reactivate with the Distress Ink, and when you when you pull them up with a paper towel, it leaves these really cool, like, water drop effect. It's, um, it's great. Distress inks really work well with that. And then I decided to add some black splatters here. So I've just smushed down my Distress Ink pad and black smut onto a clear acrylic block, added some water with my paintbrush, and then I'm just going to flick the paintbrush on the edge of that acrylic block to get a nice, even black splatter across that whole piece. This is a great way to add splatters to um, your projects. You know, you can just flick your paintbrush, but I find that you don't have as much control over your splatters as using an acrylic block like I did there. So now I'm just trying to figure out how I want this card to come together. I knew I wanted to cut out a circle 
on the front of the card so that the dog is peeking through but I wasn't sure how big of a circle to use and so I decided on this one that is the circle framelits it's retired it's from stamping up but um, you any circle dies will you will work for this technique and now I'm looking at this and I realized okay how am I gonna put this card together I need a card base I just you know I'm, I'm looking at this going wait a second how's this become a card so I took a piece of thick whisper white cardstock from Stampin' Up and I just created an A2 top folding card and I'm going to line that initial piece that we die cut out the circle onto the front of this card align the die in in that use that kind of as my template to where I need to put that circle die and then I'll just cut that circle out um, from that top folding card now if you were smart and plan this out, do not do what I do. Plan, maybe plan it out. You could have cut these together at the same time, and you wouldn't have the problems that you'll see I have later when I try to line these up uh, when gluing them together for the final card. So, you know, save yourself the trouble. Just do it in one step. And then I also realized after I cut out this circle, I really wasn't digging the little edges there on the edge of the card, I kind of wish I had picked a larger circle and moved it kind of off to the side of the card so that I didn't have those little pieces that, that hung down. But I wasn't going to redo this card, so I just went with it, and, and we're working with it. So now I'm just going to work on creating my sentiment. I have a the stamp set thoughtful banners and I wanted to create a kind of fun sentiment so I made my own by using that set and it says happy birthday crazy I thought that went really well with these crazy looking dogs and because it wasn't one stamp itself and I had to line it up I did test it on a piece of scrap paper just to make sure that I had on um, that sentiment nice and straight and now I'm just going to stamp this sentiment onto a piece of basic black cardstock that I have treated with my embossing buddy I'm going to stamp with that Versamark ink, apply that same white embossing powder that I used for the rest of the card, and then I'll heat set that with my heat tool, and we'll get a nice white crisp sentiment on that black cardstock. I did trim that sentiment down to be a nice strip, and then I also cut out an additional strip of basic black cardstock that I'm going to apply to the left-hand side of uh, my card base here. I did leave a small white sliver there, um, so you'll have like a tiny little peak of white behind the uh, black. Now here's where I struggled with lining this up perfectly. Because of the way I used the circle and cut it out, those little edges there on the right side of the card were, were hard to, to line up. And so at the end of the video, I, I don't think I edited it out. I think it's still in there. You'll see that I have to kind of go back and, and trim this card a little bit because I just didn't get it straight. But it's okay. Hey, it still works. It's handmade. It's not perfect. It's, it's not machine made. It's made by my own hand. So just go with it. I did try to fix it, but that glue had already just grabbed on there and there was no fixing it so now I just took that um that dog piece that we watercolored and I'm just gluing that directly into the inside of the card so that the dog peeks out of that circle you do see there I did add some green grass um with some of that cracked pistachio ink um, around to just kind of ground that dog and now I'm just gonna make a banner edge on the sentiment and then I'll pop it up with some foam 3d this is a 3M foam adhesive tape. I'll just add that to the top of my card and then I'll trim off the extra little piece of black that's hanging off. I did pull out my T tea, my tea roller here to make sure that I got it straight across the card. Um, I can't tell you how many sentiments I've adhered to the front of the card and realized that they're crooked. So I've been trying to use that T roller to make sure I get um, to get my sentiment straight. And here, like I said before, I just had to go back in and kind of trim off um, the parts that were hanging over the edge of this card. And that finishes off this card for today. Love this stamp set. Thanks, you guys, for joining, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.